This is a Studio Classic 20 in Blackout Edition. I mean, how cool does that look? It's awesome. Um, and it's been modded to basically the SIR number 34 spec, right? I haven't done it exactly as per some of the schematics on the internet um, because Look, it's just a bit too bitey and ice picky, I think, um, stock, right? So I will take you through the, the exact implementation um, that I've ended up with here, but it is the SIR34 to me, right? To me, that mod is all about the uh, 100 nanofarad or you know, 0.1 microfarad bypass cap on the 10K cold clipper. Right, second second gain stage of a 2204, 2203 JCM800, which is what this is, right? So as a, I guess, a donor amp to make these mods to, it's a it's, you know, perfect start, right? Any JCM800, 2203, 2204 is perfect for this thing, right? So um, you get that kind of really gritty, gnarly sound, right? So the 10K cold clipper, that's that JCM800, Kind of core tone, right? It's kind of coarsely grained gain. It's not smooth. It's very aggressive, and it's got a real kind of rumble to it, right? And when you put a bypass cap um, on that cathode resistor, right, that 10K, you get a really amazing combination of that, you know, that gritty kind of rumble, but with this aggressive bite. I mean, as if a JCM-800 needed more aggressive bite. This gives it... The amp's pretty much dialed in at midday. Presence, bass, middle, treble. I've got the master four and a half. And the gain here is uh, at eight. Right, so 3 p.m. So if I just crank it all the way up, you'll hear what it sounds like. JCM 800s are made to run the preamp game back a bit, though. I'm sure you know. They sound way better. It just takes out a bit of that, um, a bit of that bass in the preamp. It's a great rhythm amp. Like you put a um, a, a tube screamer or an SD1 in front of this thing, and it'll just sing like this. Right? So I'll do that right now. I've got an SD1 model on the axe here running in front of this thing. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a great platform for putting boosts in front of it, right? But it's a gnarly, gnarly sound. It, it's um, it's a ripping rhythm amp, and I think in a band context, um, this kind of configuration like will just push through and cut. Man, you you'll just be straight through in the middle of the mix. It'd be awesome. Um, We've done a few other things to this though, right? So the uh, the owner of the sand, Mark, hey Mark, hope you're doing well, mate. Um, we wanted to take this a uh, little bit further than just the straight 34. 
So I have added um, my three-way uh, diode clipping um, set up in this, right? So we've been listening to this amp so far just with the clipping off, right? So the 34 mod. And it's an interesting kind of mix, right? When you put this bypass 10K cold clipper 800 style, you know, set up with a, a kind of Jose um, Zena clipping, you get a pretty aggressive um, bitey sound, right? So let's have a listen to that. So I've just set it in the first of the clipping modes. I've, I've done this the way I've done uh, a bunch of my other mods. If you check out some earlier videos, you'll see that I've implement this um, Zena clipping uh, the same way. Um, I've got a set on a configuration that I like and I use. This is a 20 volt Zena setting and I'll just bring the master volume up a little bit because we do lose a little bit of volume once the, um, the Zena clamping comes on. <laughs> Masters at midday now. So there's a tiny, um, a mini toggle switch on the rear of the amp freeway. This is the other Xena mode, which is my implementation of asymmetric clipping. So it's just a little bit more compressed and a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> Before I modded this thing, I actually recorded a riff into the looper on my axe effects here, right? So, um, and I recorded the amp completely stock. I kept the loop saved in the axe effects, like I didn't turn it off, kept it on for a few days, right? And I replayed and re-recorded that same loop in through this amp um, with the uh, SIR 34 mod, the 34 with the Xena 1 mode, and the 34 with the Xena 2 mode. We'll do that now back to back, and to finish off with the video, I will show you the changes that I made, the schematic, and some detailed pictures of the mods themselves, um, just in case you were minded to warm up your soldering iron and make these changes to your Studio Classic 20. That's it for today, guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do um, ring the bell, get notified of uh, new videos. I will also include some captures um, of this thing on uh, my Quad Cortex here, right? So they'll be up in, uh, in the Cortex cloud. Head first amplification is the profile name. Check them out, guys. I'll see you next time.
Okay, so here is the schematic for uh, the final configuration for my SIR34 mod. It's not strictly the same as the 34, but it has what I believe are the es essential ingredients, and then I tailored it so I could knock off some of that ice picky top end. First thing is your guitar signal comes in here. Now in the SIR34, in those SIR mods, um, you would see this thing called a hot shield, and if you've you know, if you followed the channel, you'd see that um, the work that I did. I, I've got a 1983, um, I think it's an 83 <laughs> 2204 that had been modded, and it had the hot shield on it. What the hot shield is is a coax a piece of coax, which is wired in, replaced at the stop Marshall setup. And rather than have the shield of the coax go to ground, which is what you'd normally do, the shield of the coax goes to the plate. So it connects the signal, the outside shield of the coax, to 200 and let's call it 250 volts DC. Now, look where, you, look where your guitar plugs in, right, right here. So it's putting 250 volts on the shield of a coax cable, and there's just this one little resistor sitting in between that. Now it's not on the tip of it, right? But it is on the it is on the coax and that coax is not connected to ground or anything here, but um, you just need, you know, something to go astray there and you've got, let's call it 200 volts DC um, on your guitar. Kill a mod, <laughs> literally. Don't do it. So what you do, if you this the purpose of the of the hot shield is um, to attenuate some very top end uh, of uh, the signal actually. So there's another other ways you can do it. Do this. This is a plate snubber, 470 picofarad. Now, this is not strictly in the number 34 mod, but to do it, you know, attenuate some of that top end in a safer way. And this is a very contemporary way of doing it. Right? If you study you know, a lot of the modern high gain amps that are out on the market today, you'll see this is really common. Um, you could try 220 in here, 470. If you, if you, you know, if you, do, if you don't want to attenuate any high end and you want to you know, keep this amp pretty bright, you, you don't have to use it. Okay. So your guitar signal coming through, it's going to be amplified by this first gain stage through this coupling cap. And through the low input jack, if there's nothing plugged in here, it connects straight through. And off we go into in towards the second gain stage via this um, treble picker uh, setup here. It's 470k, and in parallel, this is normally a 470 picofarad cap, right, in a stock 2204 or 2203 for that matter. So you're going to replace that with a 2.2 nanofarad what that's going to do is going to allow more of the upper mid-range frequencies to come through in the signal rather than um you know kind of more high on the higher frequencies um we've now got uh this one nanofarad here now this um is not in the sir 34 mod but it's another technique you can use to attenuate high-end signal. It's a very useful way of getting rid of some ice pick out of that out of that tone, right? And, and you'll see this in a bunch of amps. So what you do here is you're just running a cap off the input to this gain pot here. Okay. And so the input to the gain to ground, you're setting up basically what is a low pass filter. And you can adjust this value depending on how much top end you want to take out. So the lower the value, um, the higher the cutoff point will be in your low pass filter. The higher value, the lower the frequency will be in the cutoff point for your low pass filter. To one nanofarad, it's pretty conventional. You can play with this, you know, you know between 500 picofarad and uh, say 2, 2.2. 2. Okay. Um, one nanofarad bright cap here that's stock, you don't know, change that. Now what we've got here is a 150k resistor to ground on the gain wiper. Um, this is actually doing um, 
a bit to reduce the amount of gain that's coming through here and it also provides some clarity in the signal right so um, you know if you want to if you want to keep the signal unattenuated and um, more bottom end coming through you, know, you leave that out but you'll find that you know you'll probably find that your amps can get a bit mushy this helps a lot to clean it up in terms of clarity um, it's a feel thing right you can play with this actually if you want move it up move it down remove it but you know 150 is actually part of the SIR 34 mod um, so yeah throw that in there here's our 0.1 microfarad bypass cap so 10k cold clipper is stock part of the 2203 2204 and a huge part of the sound of and the feel of these amps um, that bypass cap there is increasing the gain of the stage particularly for the higher frequencies well for the higher frequencies right um, through this gain stage so this is a big part of what really makes the SIR 34 mod really bright and for many people too bright I did a bit of reading around on the internet on this one and um, a lot of people have made this mod to their amp or played a, a modded amp to the spec or the Appetite for Destruction Marshall, so, you know, the slash signature ramp, which has two modes. It has the 34 and the 36 mod. And in the 34 mode, she's a pretty bright amp, all right? And this is a big part of why, which is, again, <laughs> why I've thrown this in here, right, to help just uh, get rid of some of that ice pick. This one nanofarad here is doing the same, similar job as this one. It's just obviously later in the circuit, and it's a higher value. Um, it is attenuating some top end here through this gain stage. And um, again, if you want to keep your amp nice and bright, leave it out. Um, but it is part of the SIR34 mod. I'd leave it in if I were you. And um, finally, for the SIR mod, this bypass cap on the third gain stage, you'll see this in a bunch of marshals, right? This is not really a... You know, it's not an SIR34 mod, although it is part of the circuit. Um, this cathode resistor on the third ga third gain stage, you'll see if you if you go back and study a bunch of vintage Marshall circuits, you'll see some of them had this uh, bypass cap 0.68 um, sitting across this third gain stage. So throw that in there. Um, it just gives a bit more zing to that gain stage. Um, You'll hear that, right? If you play the amp with this thing out and in again, you, you, you'll hear the difference, no doubt. Finally, um, this is a fixed depth circuit and it's not part of the SIR34 mod, but I added it because I, I think it helps to counterbalance the um, the brightness of this amp by bringing a bit more, a bit, a bit of you know depth. And it's a, just a nice mod to make to uh, 2203, 2204 circuits. I think, um, particularly ones where you're, you know, attenuating some of the some of the bottom end of the amp and the uh, bottom end of the signal and the preamp. And um, imagine a variable depth circuit, right? So if you've played an amp or your own amp where it's got a depth pot, which is adjustable, typically that's done with a one meg linear pot, which means that at zero. Um, you have zero resistance here, and when it's on maximum, it's at one meg. Um, so when you do a fixed depth like this, it's like having the depth just set at a particular level. And um, often when I do this, I'll put a 220k in here. Again, you know, there's a bunch of amps out there that um, use this configuration. I, it's not like I invented it. Um, so 220k, it's like having your depth pot on two and a bit. If it's a one meg linear pot okay now i implemented 220k and and 4n7 when i made when i did these mods and i took it in and played it through my 4x12 and it was like whoa no nah, too much right for me it's too much bottom end so i've settled on uh, 110k resistor which is like having the depth on one if you like right it still comes through and makes a difference. So from here, we'll have a look at some pictures of the, uh, the modded PCB. 
Um, and that, so that'll give you an idea of kind of how to actually implement these changes um, into uh, the PCB. Okay, guys, so just we're going to flick through half a dozen or so photos so you can see how I actually implemented the mods on the SC20 PCB. Okay, first thing, this is the 470 picofarad uh, plates number. So this is the 100k plate resistor for the first gain stage. It's like R32, looking at the board there. Okay, so you just put that in parallel. This is the 10k uh, cold clipper cathode resistor on the second gain stage. So I've got um, a 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad, right? 100 volt. This is a Vichet um, 18, MKT1813. You can use an electrolytic cap here if you can find one in small enough um, configuration, but these are, these are great for this job. Moving along to, this is V2 now we're looking at, and um, same deal here, right? The R26 is the plate resistor for the third gain stage, and that's a one nanofarad. Right, so in reference to the schematic, it's the one nanofarad that's sitting across that 100K plate resistor. And sitting underneath this cap here um, is, a, uh, is the 820 ohm resistor, which is the cathode resistor for the third gain stage. Um, in fact, that's it there, not sitting underneath, it's sitting alongside. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, that's it right there. Um, looks like R, mm, R28. Um, uh, that's our 0.68 microfarad bypass cap sitting there. Now over here, I've got my xenodiode um, set up, right? So I'm not going to talk about that yet. We'll come to that secondly, because I just want to go through doing the standard SIR34 mod, and then there's a kind of separate thing. Well, if you want to do the xenodiodes, this is how you do it. All right, so let's just let's just deal with the 34 um, mods. This is the depth. So at R20, this is a 100K resistor. Um, if you've seen a previous mod that I did to a Studio Classic, which is more the J.K. Lee style, I did the same thing, right? You just lift one side of that and insert your fixed depth set up here. So this is 110K and a 4.7 nanofarad ceramic. Um, and that just you know interrupts that uh, negative feedback line to put the depth circuit in there and then it continues on its merry way. Um, this here is just to give you a sense of kind of the you know the overall board right so we've looked at some of the individual changes um, and I'm just looking at across here at my second screen here to reference the schematic to make sure I haven't missed anything. I'm going to need to show you um, how I implemented um, the one nanofarad uh, low pass cap off the gain pot because the gain pots are mounted on this PCB over here. So I'll show that I'll show that um, in a final picture. But just stepping through this again, this is the 470 picofarad on the um, first plate. Is our 0.1 microfarad bypass cap here? A one nanofarad. Uh, on the plate for the third gain stage. This is the plate resistor for the second gain stage, by the way. Um, here's our 0.68 microfarad cap, bypass cap on the 820 cathode for the third gain stage. So if you wanted to progress through to do the diode clipping implementation, um, I do have a, a previous video on this. Right? So I have modded a Studio Classic. 20 previously to implement my setup here, which is how this is how I do it, right? So coming off the um, 100k cathode resistor um, of the cathode follower, right, is V2, the second part of V2. Um, what happens in the stock JCM800-2204 circuit is it connects straight off this, this um, cathode here of this tube stage and connects directly over to the tone stack. You've got to interrupt it to put this little network in here. All right. 
So this, this setup here allows for proper uh, Jose Zena clipping um, and retaining um, the master volume post the tone stack over here. Um, I've got another video if you want to check it out actually, which is titled entitled um, or titled the Friedman Sat Switch and is it wired correctly? Because I um, basically you know, um, make a statement there that I think it's not wired correctly. It's wired incorrectly um, for proper Xena diode clipping. This is the correct way, um, and you can see that video to show how I use a oscilloscope to basically back up my statement. Anyway, <laughs> that aside, what you want to do, right, is you need to insert um, this 10K and a coupling resistor here. I actually used a 0.22 microfarad in this mod. You can use anything from 0.22 to 0.47. You know, it's really just letting through, um, you know, the higher that uh, cap value, the more bottom end you'll be passing through. But at 0.22, you're absolutely letting through enough that um, to the human ear, you won't notice any difference. Um, so I'll show you in a couple of pictures how to do this. This is tricky because the PCB is not set up to allow you to, to just insert this 10K and that cap in between what is normally a direct connection. Okay, so you've got to lift a few things and work around a couple of things. And once you've got that in place, you can then hook off and set up the Xena network here. This is my three-way Xena clipping, right? So in the middle position, you need the, the 20 volt Xenas, which is my first clipping mode. And this is my uh, this is my asymmetric clipping, a 24 volt Xena and a 5 volt Xena back to back. So you're getting uneven uh, clamping there. When the switch is in the middle position, Neither of those are grounded, so they have no impact on the signal. And so you do have a 220K resistor to ground here, still in circuit. Um, but you can, you know, I've tested this, right? You can have that sitting there and you can take it in and out of the circuit. No observable difference, very, very minor. You can use a one meg in here if you're really concerned about, you know, losing any signal through here, but you'll find that you can actually play with this value here um, because it will have a tonal impact um, once these zenas come into play. 220 is pretty sweet. I like it there. You can probably go as low as 120 before it starts to you know, actually impact then your, um, you know, your signal through here when the zenas are off. Um, so then you've got the two modes, right? Uh, you know, the mini toggle one way brings these into play and the other way brings those into play. So if we go back to a few pictures, let me kind of show you how I, how I um, put those in there. Um, maybe this one here is the easiest one. I will, I, will, I will include a bunch of these photos and stick them up on the website like I normally do, so you can download them and have a look at them at your leisure. Um, here's my 10K resistor, and this is the coupling cap. All right, so um, if you go back and study how I did this last time, I actually mounted this network on the POT PCB, but it did involve cutting a PCB track. So second time around, um, I got a bit more creative with how to do it, and I managed to put it in here without having to cut a track. So arguably a better method. Um, this is the 100K cathode resistor. It's normally connected to this pad where my 10K is. Now, and that pad there um, actually connects directly to this uh, pin on V2. So to make some room, I lifted this 100K out and just moved it over to here, leaving this pad here free for me to drop that 10K in there. Okay, so that's part of the equation. Now here's the coupling cap, and I've just whacked it on the board upside down. A little bit of little little dab of glue sitting on the base of it to keep it secure, um, and it's also soldered in here, right, which helps keep it in place. It's nice and secure. So this 10k connects to this end of it. At this end, um, I'm branching off two coax cables. One goes off and goes to my diode clipping switch which I'll show you 
and the other coax comes off and goes to, to entry into the tone stack. Okay, both of these are connected um, with a ground shield and that ground shield connects to this end, really important, this end of this 100k resistor which is ground, it's audio ground. Right? It's chassis ground for the amp. You need to ground that, two reasons. One is you get a ground shield on your coax, which obviously keeps the noise away. But the ground that you run on this coax here is actually used in the um, Zena clipping switch. So it's important. This is how we get the guitar signal going into the tone stack. So this is um, you know, in reference to the schematic again here. This is the tone stack, right? Your triple pot, your bass pot, your mid pot. This is always the same in Marshalls. Well, 2204, 2203 Marshalls anyway. Um, your slope resistor, this is the cap here for the treble pot. And um, in the SD20, it's these two. It's C103 and R102. You've got to lift them out of the board. If you leave them on the board, this track here, that's the one that's providing the direct connection to the top of this 100k. So you've got to get them out, right? Otherwise, you put those in, but you've still got a connection over here and you don't want that. You've got to get rid of it. So this pulls those out and then solder them together and just you know neatly solder uh, the coax, which is this coax line here. Right. Uh, and heat shrink it on there and um, we're all happy. This is how I set up the Zenup diode switch. So in reference to the schematic, right, here's our 220K. It's to the middle pin of a, a three-way switch. It's on, off, on. Okay, underneath this heat shrink here are two Zena diodes back to back. Okay, so one of these is the 20 and a 20 and the other one is a 24 out of 5 um, and I just terminate them here together the um, the signal wire of the coax here comes and solders onto that end as well and then the ground as I said before that ground's really important it actually is going to that middle pin there and that's grounding that 220k and when the switch toggles it's grounding either this Zena network or this Zena network and that brings them into play and here's just a top-down view, it's kind of zoomed out a bit, right? So you can kind of see how this is sitting in here. And you can see the two coax lines. Here's the one that goes over to the switch. Um, and here's the other one that goes over to C103 and R102 to get the guitar signal into uh, the tone stack and off it goes. And this is how I do the changes at the gain pot, right? So this is under the um, the... PCB that the pots are mounted on. You just got to unscrew um, the nuts from the uh, from this thing, and it'll, it'll just flip out of the chassis. You don't need to, you know, pull any of the the wires or the headers um, off the PCB. It'll just flip over. So this is the 150k resistor that is going from the wiper of the gain pot to ground. All right, so. Um, the way these pots are, this is this pad here is the entry to the pot, this is the wiper, and this is the ground, right? And this pad here is not used. You can see it over here. See so connected to ground. See how the uh, on the this is the ground shield or a ground plane, I should say, through the PCB. It's ground, this is the wiper, and this is the entry to the pot, and this one's unused. So um, you just got to kind of. I'm using a you know pretty thin legged resistor here because you've got to just try and you know insert these in or get them into the pads here, nice and securely. Um, there's not a lot of room to work with. So this is a ground pad. So this is my ground. This is my 150k, and this is connecting here to the wiper, and this is my one nanofarad cap, which is the low pass filter. 
um, across the gain pot, so from the entry to the gain pot to ground. So again, you just got to work around what's available. This pad here, right, you can see the track it comes in, and this is the entry to the gain pot. So I've got one side of it here, and the other side comes across to the nearest ground point. Um, I didn't want to reuse that one because I'm already using it. So my next nearest one is the second pad here. Okay. Um, each one of these second pads, that's a ground, that's a ground, that's a ground. Um, so ground to the entry to the game pot, um, job done.